Hi everyone, I hope I am uh, audible and visible. Can I get a quick confirmation please? And if yes, then we'll start without any delay. So welcome to the next uh, session. Uh, you can say kickstart morning session but on the YouTube channel. And uh, we are going to do the rapid revision part 2 of the images that we have planned. Now all of you, I hope you are also following the daily targets. Because today is rapid revision and the targets are pretty much going to be correlating with each other. I have kept uh, images of those targets or you know images of those topics which I'll be giving to you as the targets for the day as well. So yes if um, everyone is okay with the AV and everything then we can start. We are going to first start with the image and this is all for all students whether you are appearing for NEET or FMG. Images as you all know is something which is always important so you have to know them right. Okay so all good with the AV I suppose and uh, we can start right away which organ are we starting with if I ask you we'll just go in a similar manner as yesterday I'll give you a quick two three seconds to identify the photo and then we'll start with the discussion uh, picture quality dr. Swati you'll have to arrange at your end you'll have to alter the settings of the uh, video quality at your end please okay so uh, Perfect. This is the thyroid. Why did we identify this as the thyroid gland? And this is a completely normal thyroid gland. Because there are two aspects that you look at when you're looking at a thyroid gland. Number one, uh, this is uh, round. What are these? These are round follicles. These are round follicles. So number one, you always get to see round follicles and they are lined with something. So they'll be lined with this cuboidal epithelium. You can all see that there is a row of cells that is present and inside you have something known as colloid. So that's the most characteristic point. So I can basically say that these cells are the follicular epithelial cells and what you have inside is the pink color colloid. On the other hand, so that is why all of you called it thyroid. And on the other hand, can you see there's another bunch of cells over here? Can we all appreciate this bunch of cells? Because they are away from the follicles. They are referred to as the parafollicular C cells. They are referred to as the parafollicular C cells. And everyone knows from their basic anatomy physiology that parafollicular C cells are going to release something known as calcitonin. They release calcitonin and that is something very important that you can get as a marking. So remember the cells inside the follicles are the follicular epithelial cells. Cells within the follicles are follicular cells. Cells outside the follicles are going to be the parafollicular C cells which is the only thyroid cancer which arises from these parafollicular C cells. The only thyroid cancer. Think if it gives rise to calcitonin, what is the thyroid cancer arising from it? Medullary carcinoma thyroid. Other than that guys, every other cancer arises from the follicular. If you say papillary carcinoma thyroid, follicular carcinoma thyroid, anaplastic carcinoma thyroid, so papillary, follicular, anaplastic, all cancers are from the follicular epithelial cells, only medullary is from the parafollicular epithelial cells. Okay, however, now I'm going to do a change. If I say, uh, let me ask you a question, if these follicular epithelial cells now end up getting a lot of mitochondria, if they end up getting a lot of mitochondria, what name would you give to them? These follicular cells suddenly change, they are changing into something, they get a lot of mitochondria, you call them, so if they are very rich in mitochondria, you call them the hurdle cells. Lots of names were given to the hurdle cells, very very good. Hurdle cells, Ascanazi cells, oncocytic cells, oxyphilic cells are all the same. Dr. Shanu, yes, this is important for the FMG as I had mentioned in the beginning, important for every exam that we are talking about in today's scenario. Okay, so coming back, Hurdle cells named after a scientist, Askenazi cells, again, these were the two scientists who discovered it. When I say oxyphilic, oxyphilic basically means that they are extremely pink. So yes, you can identify that these cells are extremely, extremely pink in appearance. That is why we call them oxyphilic. And why do we call them oncocytic? Because anything that is rich in mitochondria is going to be oncocytic. So anything in mitochondria oncocytes. So can you see all these very very pink cells? Yes. 
Now, what are the questions that you get with regard to hurdle cells? Guys, where do you see hurdle cells? Is hurdle cells a specific finding for something? No, please remember hurdle cell is a non-specific finding. What are the two questions that you get to see it in? Number one, they will always ask you a question about a thyroiditis. H for H, hurdle cells are seen in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hurdle cells are noted in Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Hurdle cells can also be noted in tumors. Example, follicular adenoma. Example, follicular adenoma also shows you hurdle cells. So, repeating, hurdle cells for Hashimoto's, hurdle cells for follicular adenoma. But basically, I want to tell you that this is not a specific finding. Okay, moving on to the next. Guys, I am showing you a picture. I will tell you, this is an FNSC photo that we have. This is an FNSC done from the thyroid. My question to you is, is this adequate for interpretation or not? What do you want to comment on the adequacy of this smear? Is it adequate or not? Yes or no? So I've got you the FNSC and um, all of you call it yes ma'am. It is definitely adequate. Perfect. So what is the adequacy criteria? The adequacy criteria is 6 and 10. What do I mean by 6 and 10? I should see at least six groups. I should see at least six groups of the cells. Can you see six groups minimum? You say, ma'am, one group of cells, second, third, fourth, fifth, sixth. You can add one more over here as the sixth one, one tiny one as seven. So definitely you're seeing more than six groups of cells and each group should have at least 10 cells. 10 cells should be present per group. So yes, I can, I no need to count. I can definitely see more than 10 cells per group. So repeating guys, this is the thing that you expect. This came in the AIMS exam also. This is something you expect. What is the criteria of adequacy for thyroid FNA samples? So what did I tell you? 6 and 10. Minimum of 6 groups. Minimum of 6 groups with at least 10 cells per group. So 6 groups and 10 cells. 6, 10 is important but when are the special circumstances considered means that even if you will not have 610 you will still say that it is adequate what are the special circumstances please remember atypia inflammation colloid atypia inflammation and colloid means first and foremost let's start with colloid if there is lots and lots of colloid basically you are dealing with colloid goiter Obviously, you will not see these 6 on 10 kind of cells. You won't get to see them. But you will still give it as adequate because colloid he dikhega. Colloid is what you will get in a colloid nodule. So, you will give it. Second, if you say, ma'am, I am not seeing these 6 on 10 cells, but I am seeing lots of inflammation. Maybe it is a case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis or granulomatous thyroiditis. You will say, fine, if you are seeing lots and lots of itis, lots and lots of inflammation, even if you are not seeing 6 on 10, you will still report it as adequate. And coming to the third one, atypia. Atypia is the most dangerous. Atypia basically means patient might have some cancer. If you are seeing even 5 cells which are atypical, they are not falling under this 6 by 10 criteria, but they are bad looking cells, patient might have cancer, you have to tell the clinician, you can't say sample is not adequate, you will have to tell the clinician that yes, there are atypical cells seen, so I am calling it as an adequate specimen. So what are the 3 special circumstances? Colloid nodule, inflammation and atypia. Are we okay with this? Right? Dr. Shanu, I think this is the second or the third time I am trying to reach out to you. I have replied multiple times. Yes, this is important for the FMG exam also. Okay, moving on to the next one. So, what is this picture? This picture, thyroid gland, quick answer. Okay, Dr. Chakravarti, for breast FNSC, there is no adequacy criteria. There is no number or numerical criteria for breast FNSC. Okay, so yes, I've started getting answers. Many of you think this is a case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Why do I call it Hashimoto's thyroiditis? For that, I also have to know that there are other names of Hashimoto's thyroiditis. Simple name of it is lymphocytic thyroiditis. Means the cell that I'm going to see is going to be lots and lots of lymphocytes. Exactly what you're seeing over here. You'll say that, ma'am, firstly, I can see the round, round thyroid follicles. Can everyone appreciate? the thyroid follicles yes so one part of it becomes 
thyroid gland and the other part if you look you'll see ma'am very very blue color aggregates extremely blue color aggregates are noted because these blue color aggregates are lymphoid follicles these are all the lymphocytes or the lymphoid aggregates i'll show you one more picture have a look at this you'll see ma'am the same thing is happening here first and foremost i can see this pink pink color round thyroid gland this part of it is thyroid and after that i can see these extremely blue color lymphoid aggregates all of this becomes the lymphoid aggregate so definitely i'm dealing with a case of hashimotos thyroiditis let's have a look at one more picture have a look at this same concept you will say one end of it is showing you thyroid gland and one end of it is showing you the lymphoid follicle so when you start seeing thyroid and lymphoid thyroid and lymphoid you are dealing with hashimotos and did i tell you some cells with h that right now we said some pink color cells which you can also see in a case of hashimotos did we discuss these very very pink and big cells i hope everyone remembers which are very very rich in mitochondria so definitely hashimotos thyroiditis shows you the very famous herdel cells the herdel or the askenazy cells they are present in a case of hashimotos thyroiditis if you have studied so much of hashimotos why not look at the gross photo also how do we identify the gross picture of hashimotos thyroiditis it is very rarely will it be a nodule it's not a solitary nodule that's not how hashimotos presents hashimotos presents as something like a diffuse enlargement the entire thyroid gland will be enlarged so there's a diffuse enlargement and homogeneous what do i mean by homogeneous look at the color everywhere the color is the same the color is the same it's not red or hemorrhagic or necrotic no same color same color and entire gland is enlarged so this is going to be a case of Hashimoto's thyroiditis how will you prove it you will take a sample you will see the thyroid and the lymphoid combo and you will be able to prove it okay dr sneha says ma'am thyroid lymphoma will be different different from what see you do need to understand uh, when you are seeing lymphocytes i am obviously talking about normal lymphocytes i am not talking about the lymphoma cells i am just seeing normal lymphocytes that are there whereas when you will talk about a lymphoma obviously you are talking about a cancer the lymphoma cells will be bad looking they will be malignant cells so there's no comparison between a normal looking tiny looking innocent lymphocyte and a very malignant kind of a lymphoma cell so they look every they look definitely different okay coming back what kind of thyroiditis is this which thyroiditis are we talking about which thyroiditis does this come down to i can see something very very big over here one giant cell here one giant cell here no okay one answer i've got is redel's thyroiditis th think again i'm showing you giant cells why don't you want to call it giant cell thyroiditis simple keep it simple right with images always remember try to keep it very very simple this is a case of giant cell thyroiditis which all of you very famously know as d quervain thyroiditis yes d quervain thyroiditis is identified there are some very characteristic points that you get for d quervain thyroiditis firstly you see giant cells can you see that in the giant cells there are multiple nuclei everyone can appreciate that and apart from the nuclei you will say ma'am it looks as if it's eating something there is some pinkish material that it has tried to eat so please remember giant cell thyroiditis will show you giant cells which have engulfed colloid they have eaten up what is the there's only one pink color thing in thyroid right and that pink color thing is colloid so there are giant cells which are basically eaten up the colloid so that is how the picture will come how will the clinical aspect of giant cell or d quervain thyroiditis come so there are very d quervain thyroiditis or giant cell thyroiditis will come to you with two important clinical features this is a very common cause of painful thyroid enlargement the patient will definitely 
tell you that there is a thyroid enlargement and there is pain. So first history that you'll get will be of pain and very commonly it can be post viral infection. So they might give you for example you know maybe in a child uh, following mumps infection or maybe following a child there is in an adenovirus infection. So basically post viral number one and number two pain in the thyroid. These are the two things which will guide me towards dequervin thyroiditis. I look at it under the microscope, I get giant cells which have engulfed colloid. I think that aspect is done. Everyone's okay with it. Coming to the next photo, gross photo and microscopic. What is your diagnosis on this? Gross photo shows you a very characteristic color and then microscopy also shows you a nice finding. Started getting answers. You all feel this is a case of Graves disease. Yes. Okay. So let's discuss one by one what all will everything. Let's go in order. For example, I have a patient of Graves disease or any case of thyroid. The first thing that I do is I do an FNSE. After that, if needed, I will do a surgery. So I will see the sample and after surgery, we will do histopathology. We will basically do biopsy. So let's go one by one. If you're dealing with a case of Graves disease, for example, and you do FNSE, this is what you get on FNSE. Can you all see the cells, the very characteristic, easy looking blue color cells that these are just thyroid cells. You will see that in every condition. What am I trying to show you apart from the cells? Can you see these pinkish pinkish lines coming out of the cells? Again, a pinkish kind of a line coming out. These are known as fire flares. It looks as if the cells are on fire. These are known as fire flares and they are indicative of dilated endoplasmic reticulum. They are known as fire flares and dilated endoplasmic reticulum is what they are made up of. Why do we see fire flares? Tell me guys, Graves disease is what kind of a disorder? Hypothyroidism or is it thyrotoxicosis? Is it hyperthyroidism? What kind of a disorder is going to be Graves? As far as I know, my knowledge goes, it is hyperthyroidism and I think everyone agrees with me. So basically, hormone production is going to go up. T3, T4, hormone production will go up and these are nothing but those hormones which are flaring up. It's the flare of the hormones. This, you'll say ma'am, who has made this fire flare appearance? It's the hormones and where are they being shown? They are being shown in the dilated endoplasmic reticulum. So number one, FNSC of Graves, fire flares. Then you do a surgery. When you do a surgery, you'll say ma'am, once again, the entire thyroid is enlarged. There is a diffuse enlargement that you are seeing out here and the color, the color is very very characteristic, beefy red color for Graves disease. Okay, coming to the next one, what is the next picture that you have? Again, let's see unlabeled. When I look at this, you will say ma'am, one thing I agree that there are all round round follicles but this time they are not completely round. There is a little bit of, can you see these invaginations and this irregularity in the structure of them they are no longer completely round like this right so what are these structures you'll say ma'am as if you know tiny tiny projections tiny tiny projections are coming out we call them pseudo papilla why do i call them pseudo papilla what is the reason for calling it pseudo papilla that is there is no, see, obviously, if there's a pseudo papilla, there will be a true papilla also. So, this is a question again which you could expect in one of, if I say this is a pseudo papilla and this is a true papilla, what is the difference? Pseudo papilla is, pseudo means it's going to fall down very quickly, means it has nothing to support it. Whereas when I talk about a true papilla, it has something to support it. It will have a core present. It will have a core of blood vessels inside it. That is why it will be able to stand longer. How do we differentiate? Very good. When you don't see any core inside it, that is a pseudo papilla. And that is what you see in a case of Graves disease. Whereas when you see a true papilla and there's a proper core, what core am I talking about? All of you have told me fibrovascular core. When you're considering a fibrovascular core, you are dealing with a case of papillary carcinoma thyroid, which I'll show you in a while. So remember true papilla for PCT and pseudo papilla for Graves disease. I can see those tiny, tiny pseudo papillary projections happening. And one more thing, let us see the higher part. Can you see it looks as if someone is trying to eat the colloid? 
someone is trying to scoop out like you scoop out ice cream there's basically someone is trying to scoop out colloid and that is another feature known as scalloping of colloid that is also something you see in Graves disease repeating number one on FNSC you see fire flares which are dilated endoplasmic reticulum on gross examination you see beefy red involvement on microscopy you see pseudo papilla and number two you also see the scalloping of Colloid. These are all the features of graves that you have to know, which makes me, uh, you know, make you attempt the next one. Now tell me, if I say this is a big papilla out here, is this a true one or is it empty? Can you see a core inside? I can see something inside. I can definitely see something inside. So let's highlight this over here becomes the papilla. This over here becomes the papilla. And I can see something going through and through inside. So what do you want to call it? Very good. If this is a true papilla, you want to call it with a core papillary carcinoma thyroid. What all other features do I need? This is just the first feature. What other features do I need for papillary carcinoma thyroid? I think I don't even need to take a test. Everyone knows the very famous orphan Annie appearance means nucleus will be white. The nucleus is going to be totally white. See, it's looking completely white. Clear nucleus is known as orphan Annie I nucleus. Where do you see orphan Annie I nucleus? Do you see it on an FNSC or do you see it on a biopsy? In which condition and in which technique do we see orphan Annie I nucleus? We see it on a biopsy. We don't see it on an FNSC. Why is that so? You will say, ma'am, same patient, same thyroid, same papillary carcinoma. When you do a needle, when you do FNSC, you don't see orphan Annie. When you do a biopsy, you see orphan Annie. Why? Because orphan Annie happens to be a formalin artifact. Formalin leads to the formation of orphan Annie. It's said to be a formalin artifact. Out of FNSE and biopsy, I use formalin only in biopsies. That is why formalin will make this and biopsy will show you orphan Annie. FNSE does not use formalin, so FNSE will not show you the orphan Annie appearance. What else do you see? Number one, we've done true papilla. Number two, we've done orphan Annie appearance. Number three, look at the nucleus over here. Can you all appreciate that inside the nucleus, you have a dot. Let's repeat. There's a cell, okay? In that cell, there's a nucleus and there's a dot that is present inside it. There's a dot in the nucleus, intranuclear cytoplasmic inclusion. Why do I call it cytoplasmic inclusion? Because you'll want to ask me that, ma'am, what is this dot made up of? Where did this dot in the nucleus come from? I'll say it has actually come from the cytoplasm. So the cytoplasm, if I take the pink color cytoplasm, that pink color cytoplasm has gone inside the nucleus. So we call it intranuclear cytoplasmic inclusions. Okay, anything else which I can already read, everyone's told me correctly, the coffee bean appearance. You will see that the nuclei show a line. The nuclei are going to show a groove. And that is known as a coffee bean appearance. What's the last thing? Something with calcification, which everyone knows. With calcification, we have something called samoma body. So yes, and I hope, I think by now, at this stage of the exam, I don't need to ask you this simple question that samoma bodies come under dystrophic calcification. So recap, papillary carcinoma shows you true papilla. Number two shows you orphan Annie eye appearance. Number three shows you inclusions in the nucleus, inky that will be present. Number four shows you the coffee bean appearance. Number five shows you the presence of samoma bodies. Okay, uh, Dr. DNA, I think you joined us late because that's the first thing that we identified. Uh, that is how to identify hurdle cells. Hurdle cells which are also known as the Oxyphilic cells will always be very very pink. They will be dense pink in color. So if you compare a normal thyroid. See normal thyroid cells are so dot 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 small small cells. Whereas look at a hurdle cell. Hurdle cell is going to look extremely big and pink. So remember big and pink cell in the thyroid is going to be the hurdle cell. Okay, coming to the next for papillary carcinoma, what about the gross? Papillary carcinoma is not a gross finding. For example, if I say this is the thyroid, papillary will be like a nodule. 
so it can come as a solitary nodule now for that matter when a solitary nodule comes it could be papillary carcinoma it could be follicular carcinoma it could be medullary carcinoma so cancers don't get diagnosed on the gross appearance cancers obviously are always diagnosed on the microscopic appearance that is why gross over here is not important okay having said that papillary carcinoma is done what kind of cancer or is this a cancer what is the etiology what is the diagnosis that you have over here so you can definitely see the thyroid you can see the thyroid follicles out here and what else okay you say follicular carcinoma thyroid for the diagnosis of follicular carcinoma thyroid we have to fulfill two criteria number one criteria is that the capsule has to be invaded capsular invasion should be present and number two criteria is that vascular invasion should be present these are the two criteria that we have to fulfill so in this picture if i highlight there is a capsule that is present up till here and there is a capsule that is present up till here and suddenly i see there is a volcano kind of an eruption something from beneath is tearing the capsule so i can say capsular invasion is present number one next i have to look at blood vessel so let's look at the other photo you will say definitely ma'am this is a huge blood vessel that we have you know i can even see the tiny tiny red blood cells so this is a blood vessel and i can see there's a huge cancer sitting inside it there is a huge set of cells sitting inside it so vascular invasion is also so present when these two criteria are met that is like a mushroom this is growing out like a mushroom i can see the cancer has come out or the blood vessel is invaded when they are met i say it's a case of follicular carcinoma coming to the next one what thyroid etiology do you think this is if they give you the history of thyroid and they say this is a polarizing microscope this is the polarizing microscopic view of the thyroid gland so what is your answer in this case perfect what did i why did i mention polarizing microscopy because with polarizing microscopy in pathology i know very famous question that is congo red for amyloid congo red when i put for amyloid i see the uh, congo red as this i see it as apple green i think many of you yes are getting it right we see it at the very famous apple green appearance that greenish color that comes from amyloid and which is the thyroid cancer that shows you amyloid it is medullary carcinoma thyroid so apple green by refringence anywhere in pathology will mean that congo red stain was used amyloid is stained and you give your answer as per that i hope that's okay everyone is getting it right should we move on to the next set of images the next set of images that i've got for you today are the ovarian tumor so let's do a very rapid revision of all the important ovarian tumor photos that come to us and the first thing that i would want to ask you is this which ovarian tumor do you think this is i can definitely see cysts inside it cavities which ovarian tumor diagnosis Dr Sahil follicular cancer acha before i proceed follicular cancer cannot be diagnosed on fnac why i'll just show you why why can it not be diagnosed on fnac because on fnac neither can you see the capsule nor can you see the blood vessel so follicular carcinoma thyroid cannot be diagnosed on fnac that's again a very very famous question of the previous years reason you understood because neither will you see the capsule on fnac nor will you see the the vascular etiology okay yes meanwhile i had got the answers you said ma'am many many cysts are present one cyst second cyst third tiny tiny many others so you will say ma'am basically if i ask you uniloculated or multiloculated we say that this is a case of multiloculated cyst this is a case of multiloculated cyst and now this is where you get the difference how do you differentiate a serous tumor in the ovary with a mucinous tumor in the ovary please remember look at this you'll see ma'am over here single cavity is seen i see a single cavity that is going to be there so obviously you will first have to look at the number so if you see number 1 you see a single or a uniloculated cyst you are seeing see a single or a uniloculated cyst versus look at this you will say ma'am one cyst one cyst one one versus you see a 
M for M, multi loculated cyst. So that's your mnemonic. If you see single, then you're dealing with serous tumors. This means this could be a serous tumor in the ovary. And when you're dealing with multi loculated, you'll say, ma'am, this means this is a mucinous tumor of the ovary. What else will you differentiate it on the basis of? So, first you've done mucinous will be multi loculated. And serous is going to be single cyst. Then the color of the fluid, what is there inside it? Serous means watery. You will see the presence of watery fluid. Whereas mucin means jelly-like. You will see the presence of mucinous or jelly-like fluid that will be present. So that is how you differentiate. Over here, we see multi-loculated. When I say multi-loculated, M for M, this is a mucinous tumor. What else? The differences are not over. You say ma'am, then we'll start looking at it under the microscope. Under the microscope, serous, it has an C, S wala sound to it, serous. So, serous is going to show you the ciliated epithelium. Serous tends to show you ciliated epithelium that yes, there are going to be cilia that are cilia that are attached to it. Can I say cilia are something which I see very similar to in a fallopian tube? That is how you learn it. That in the ovary, a serous ovarian tumor basically starts looking like the cilia of the fallopian tube. Whereas a mucinous, mucin will always be clear. You will say ma'am the kind of cells that you are seeing here, the kind of cells that you are seeing here, they are all lightish in color. They are very light pink or white in color because all of them contain a lot of mucin. So, repeating, serous is going to be ciliated and mucin is going to be empty, empty looking cells. That is the final difference. So, we can always tabulate and one more difference after that, we'll ask, I'll ask you after that. When we have to differentiate serous versus mucinous, the first thing in the paper, we look at the number of the cysts. The number of the cysts in serous is going to be single or uniloculated. In mucinous, it is going to be multiloculated. Second, we look at the fluid. The fluid in the serous is going to be just like water, plain watery fluid will be there. Whereas in mucinous, it is going to be a gel kind of a fluid that will be there. Next, you look at the microscopic examination. Serous will show you cilia, whereas mucin will show you mucinous kind of cells. Last thing, where do you see samoma bodies? In which of these can you see the presence of some OMA bodies, I think I don't need to take a test on that. Exam going students, I'm assuming you guys know this. The serous show, tumors show you some OMA bodies. Mucinous tumors do not show you some OMA bodies. So these are the four main things in the exam on which you will be differentiating serous versus mucinous, right? Okay, coming to the next one. If I show you this kind of an ovarian tumor, where nests and islands are seen, where such nests and islands are seen and further when I show you the nuclei, I say they show you a coffee bean appearance. So remember there are nests and islands that are seen uh, which indicates what? It indicates urinary bladder epithelium. Basically, no, uh, hang on, uh, some open. I think on the basis of, uh, very good. So on the basis of coffee bean, I've got two answers. I'll take up that query first. On the basis of the coffee bean appearance in the ovary, uh, some of you have called it granulosa cell tumor and some of you have called it the Brenner tumor. But there's a difference that you have over here, right? That is, uh, this will also show you, this will also show you coffee bean. But granulosa cell tumor will also show you something known as collects the bodies. And in this photo, I was not showing you collex in the body. So first, let me, um, you know, uh, clarify that, that what are collex in the body. Guys, these are collex in the bodies, round, round bodies with pink material, round, round bodies with pink material. Again, round bodies with pink material. These are the collex in the bodies. And apart from that, the nuclei will show a line inside them. Apart from that, the nucleus will show a line. So, when you see call exner and coffee bean, that is when you call it a granulosa cell tumor. For those who had a confusion, I hope it is sorted. For granulosa cell tumor, coffee bean and round round bodies with pink material, call exner bodies. Where is the tumor that I had shown you right now? This had no call exner body. This had islands of cells because that indicates similar to urinary bladder epithelium, basically similar to transitional epithelium. B for bladder, B for Brenner. The tumor showing you the urinary bladder epithelium is going to be the Brenner tumor. It's going to be the 
Brenner tumor, right? So this was a case of Brenner tumor out here. Coming to the next one, what does this picture tell you? Diagnosis. Diagnosis, guys. What does this photo tell you out here? The gross and the microscopy both need to be analyzed. Perfect. So we have this germinoma is the answer that has come. Okay. So firstly, you say that ma'am, whether you are dealing with this germinoma that you have in the ovary or you are dealing with seminoma in the testis, either ways, they have a very characteristic fleshy cut potato appearance. It looks like a potato. Cut potato or a fleshy appearance is something that you see in this germinoma also and seminoma also. And what do you see microscopically? First and foremost, I'll just highlight any cell out here. Do you what is the overall appearance of these cells? Are they looking do they look pink like usual or are they looking more whitish? What is the appearance that you have? Do they look very, very pink or do they look whitish? I think they have a clear appearance. Because please remember, this germinoma, seminoma cells are very, very clear. They are clear cells. And why are they clear, guys? They are whitish. Some of you are calling them fried egg, perfect. But why are they clear? They are clear because they contain glycogen. Clear cells of seminoma and this germinoma contain glycogen. Yes, so first thing is done. Second, you will say, ma'am, I see this band of cells. In this band, I see blue color dot 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 multiple blue color dots because this tumor also shows you inflammation lymphocytes and plasma cells it shows you lymphoplasmacytic infiltration lymphocytes and plasma cells are seen out here very very important so if you're seeing clear cells because of glycogen and you're seeing lymphoplasmacytic infiltrate with a cut potato appearance ovary dysgerminoma and uh, testis seminoma Coming to the next one, what is your answer out here? This is classical. I don't think we need too much of a discussion on this. Three-year-old female ovarian tumor. Three-year-old is also a very good uh, hint that I've given to you. Three-year-old female ovarian tumor. With three-year-old only, you've identified that it's a yolk sac tumor. And obviously, the photo that has been shown to you is very, very characteristic. This is known as a Schiller dual body. And the other name of a Schiller dual body is that it looks like a glomerulus. It is a glomeruloid body. Everyone is right. So Schiller dual body or glomeruloid body, how do we identify? I will always find a blood vessel in the center. There will be a blood vessel in the center. So first thing that we label it is a blood vessel. After that, surrounding it, I will see a row of tumor cells. I will be seeing a row of tumor cells. After that surrounding it, I'll be seeing a white color space. There's an entire white color space. And then surrounding it again, I see another row of tumor cells. Another row of tumor cells. So how is the Schiller dual body identified? Firstly, you have a blood vessel, then a tumor space and then a tumor. Basically, between the two tumors linings, you have a space. Blood vessel, tumor, space, tumor. Dr. Priyanka, yes, the blood vessel is necessary and the photo that came in the INICT, I saw that picture because many of you had shared it. It definitely had a blood vessel. The blood vessel was there. Maybe sometimes in the exam, we are unable to identify all the features. But I, I've seen that photo, the blood vessel was there. Okay, so repeating guys, we have blood vessel, tumor, space, tumor. Also, can you see these pink, pink color globules? Can you see these pink pink color globules? Why are they present? What are these pink color globules doing over here in the ovary? So remember, these are referred to as the highly globules. What do you think? They won't give you this photo for identification. They will mark it for you. They will say that these are hyaline globules that are seen in a yolk sac tumor. Uh, once they've marked it, they will ask you that uh, what is the etiology? Why are they present? What are they composed of? So what is the tumor marker? What levels are increased in yolk sac tumor? I think everyone knows alpha fetoprotein levels are increased. So hyaline globules are nothing but aggregates of alpha fetoprotein. They are containing AFP. That is these pink color dots that you are seeing. Okay, coming to the next, ovarian tumor, gross diagnosis. Ovarian tumor, gross diagnosis, what do you think on this? 
what do you think of this ovarian tumor lots and lots of hemorrhage lots and lots of hemorrhage reddish color areas little yellowish color areas for necrosis also so basically when you see lots of hemorrhage and lots of necrosis in the ovary we have to think of choriocarcinoma we think of choriocarcinoma so how will i identify choriocarcinoma you will have to look at it under the microscope when i look at it under the microscope i see two types of cells for choriocarcinoma number 1 cytotrophoblast number 1 number 2 syncytiotrophoblast how do i identify cytotrophoblast this is going to look something like this single nucleus where is syncytio see remember syncytium always means a group today all of us are a group of students studying we are a syncytium studying together so when we talk about syncytiotrophoblast they will have multiple nuclei inside it multinucleated can i say cytotrophoblast is nothing but mononuclear cell it's a mononucleated cell whereas syncytiotrophoblast is nothing but a multinucleated cell let's mark them out see over here one cell one nucleus one cell one nucleus one cell one nucleus all of these are cytotrophoblasts whereas look at this cell i can see lots of nuclei inside it look at this cell for that matter again you can see lots of nuclei inside it look at this cell i can see 1 2 3 4 these are syncytiotrophoblasts so when i see cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast that is when i call it a choriocarcinoma but guys uh, forget cancers forget everything about cancers if i take you back to embryology basic normal human embryology where do you study cyto and syncytiotrophoblast where do you study cyto and syncytiotrophoblast we study it in making of placenta you will say ma'am the placenta has cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast they make villi they make big big villi so i will see that in the placenta villi will be present and they will be lined with cytotrophoblast and they will be lined with syncytiotrophoblast so you will say basically ma'am choriocarcinoma is having these two cells but are they combining to make a villi did i show you any big villus structure over here no because that is one of the most important findings that you have in choriocarcinoma remember there will not be any villi that's the golden rule there will be no villi that you are going to see over here so i hope that's okay with everyone everyone the identified tumor marker bata do i think that's something i don't have to ask you everyone knows choriocarcinoma tumor marker immunohistochemistry i've done brown color stain immunohistochemistry it is beta hcg everyone knows so these are all the three findings lots of hemorrhage and necrosis cytotrophoblast and syncytiotrophoblast beta hcg is the tumor marker we are dealing with the case of choriocarcinoma the next one i really don't feel like asking you it's just a formality that i'm doing because for completion but i think each one of you already knows that this is a case of a teratoma because as soon as you start seeing hair and teeth and bone and again a tuft of hair over here you obviously know that we are dealing with teratoma so again no doubts on you not knowing this i am very sure about it but yes this part of the teratoma is the treasure hunt this part of the teratoma is what you have to have to analyze it's the treasure hunt and this is known as the rocketansky protuberans this is known as the rocketansky protuberans why do i call it the treasure hunt because you cut through you have to open the treasure you have to open that box to find out that does it actually have gold coins or Or is it empty? You have to find that out. So, what does this treasure have? I have to cut and find out why. Because maybe there is—I'm not sure. Maybe there is a cancer sitting inside it. I'm not sure as of now. So, I'll have to cut through it. I'll have to look at what does the treasure hunt have for me. If it has cancer, I'll obviously have to inform the clinician. Sometimes it might not have cancer. It's not necessary that it will have cancer. It may or may not. So, I can't leave that doubt. I'll have to cut through it. I'll have to examine it, and then I'll find out whether a cancerous area is present or not. So, I think this part is done. This teratoma is simple. But what is this teratoma? okay if i say this is a kind of a teratoma and you can see the gross finding over here you can see the microscopic finding over here you say ma'am have you gone back to the previous organ right now you had shown us all the pictures of thyroid now in the ovary again i am showing you that thyroid follicles are present 
in the ovary i am showing you that thyroid has come obviously we know and uh, thyroid matlab colloid a lot of colloid will also be there that is why i can see golden brown colloid that is present there is a golden brown colloid that has come out in the ovaries and over here i see the thyroid follicles i am dealing with a case of stroma ovary very very important i am dealing with stroma ovary my next question Although the thyroid is in the ovarian tissue, is it functional thyroid? Does it produce hormones or not? Functional or non-functional? So please remember, this thyroid is functional. Imagine someone has thyroid in the ovary, and that person has features of hyperthyroidism. She comes to us with features of hyperthyroidism. Her no, her usual thyroid gland is normal, but the thyroid gland in the ovary that is making a lot of hormones. So yes, it's not a showpiece. It's a working thyroid tissue. it's a working thyroid functional thyroid that we have okay next coming to dr priya has a different question what is chronic granulation tissue okay dr priya although that has nothing to do with whatever is on the screen but granulation tissue is something to do with repair and chronicity means that repair always refers to fibrosis scar formation that a granulation tissue has started moving towards scarring that could be one or i think what you want to ask me is actually excessive granulation tissue if i am trying to get your question right excessive granulation tissue is probably what would be the right term and excessive will mean that proud flesh that's the other name excessive granulation tissue means too much of granulation tissue going on and on and on and scar is not forming after that only and only granulation tissue is forming so if you're meaning chronic granulation tissue means it has changed into a scar if you're meaning excessive granulation tissue then means only and only granulation tissue is there and there is no scar okay having said that the next tumor that we come back to i think i've already identified this with you guys so we don't have to repeat it granulosa cell tumor call exna bodies with coffee bean this is sorted coming to the next one is also quite simple what are these two bilateral big big ovarian masses that are present and we say the female also has a stomach cancer now the female also has a stomach cancer and the stomach cancer has gone to the ovary obviously you are dealing with a case of krukenberg tumor you are dealing with krukenberg tumor and what do you see under the microscope for krukenberg tumor very very classical everyone identifies these these are referred to as the signet ring cells these are referred to as the signet ring cells so how do i see signet ring cells you will always see a cell like this under the cell you will see that the nucleus has come here the nucleus has come to the edge the nucleus has come to the edge and it is full of what it is full of mucin it is full of mucin that you have so these are the signet ring cells and they are seen in krukenberg tumor that's also the last image that you have with regard to the thyroid and the ovarian tumors also i'll be posting the targets of the day in exactly 10 minutes on the telegram group and the targets are definitely going to have thyroid and ovarian in it today so that is why you've done all the images that part of it is done now you just have to quickly revise the theory from your quick start morning sessions so that is the target that i'll be posting okay um um Uh, i have a couple of questions i'll take that up um, adequacy of a pap smear dr bhavna for pap smear we depend on which type of pap smear that we have although pap smear is something i'm discussing tomorrow but we have two types of pap smears conventional and lbc for conventional we should have 8000 to 12000 cells and for liquid based cytology we should have 5000 cells that's the basic criteria okay coming to and tomorrow anyway we are doing all photos of pap smear dr bhavna so all of that will be sorted uh, dr ritu and dr others the micro crash course has already started and uh, this is starting this has started in the evening at 8 o'clock and i put up a recorded video on the youtube channel so this has already begun and today also at 8 o'clock i'll be putting it up i'll try my level best to finish up because there are multiple classes and recordings happening in the evening that is why i could not take this live but i'm putting it up as recording and i'm giving you the pdf also so it's pretty much the same thing also for students appearing for neat you can definitely view them i'll try my level best if other classes permit i'll try my level best to finish this before neat uh, fingers crossed right okay so um, uh most common ectopic tissue in not merkels i think you want to ask me about meckel's diverticulum pancreatic tissue 
Okay. And um, Dr. Ipsita, yes, that will happen on Telegram uh, within a day or two. I'll definitely let you guys know. Uh, virology kickstart morning sessions again guys there are certain kickstart morning sessions which were conducted under the plus platform so virology is only under the plus platform general virology is available under the kickstart morning that i've anyway conducted general virology is available under special classes those you can see but the uh, plus classes have the full virology so yes that is something where we have a constraint so full virology would be available under plus Okay, Rokitansky is mature. No, uh, Dr. Medic, uh, Rokitansky is seen, can be seen in any teratoma. Whether it is cancerous or not, that I'll find out after I cut through it. Rokitansky can be present in any kind of a teratoma. Okay, Dr. Binay, there's an entire link of the microbiology course that is already posted on Telegram. There's no month. There's a series of courses that have been posted and in that the entire virology is covered. So if you click on the link, you'll definitely get to the virology part as well. Okay. Right, Dr. Ashna, yes, yesterday at 8 o'clock, the first part of the microbio crash course was already posted. Today at 8 o'clock, the next part will also be posted. Okay, anaplastic carcinoma, Dr. SR, anaplastic carcinoma photos do not come because the word only tells you it's very, very uh, bad looking anaplasia. So you do not get pictures of anaplastic carcinoma thyroid, be rest assured. Okay, so Dr. Vinay, if you're not on uh, any social media, then you'll have to at least be on Anacademy to be able to view those. If you go on Anacademy, there's a course on the plus platform known as Comprehensive Course of Microbiology comprehensive course of microbiology and there's only one course which has 34 lessons it's the most extensive under those lessons you just have to go and click on the virology portion and you'll be able to view them okay and all the others who are asking on the plus platform there is a comprehensive course comprehensive course has entire virology that you guys are looking out for okay Right. Thank you so much, guys. Thank you for joining. The microbio crash course will be uploaded at 8 o'clock and PDF also undoubtedly I'll be sharing. Other than that, I'll be meeting you guys tomorrow morning. We'll do pap smear, some other photos. Along with pap smear, I'm also going to, apart from pap smear, I'll, I'm also going to revise some microbiology photos with you guys tomorrow. So timing remains the same, 7.30 YouTube channel. And yes, I hope that will benefit you. All the best. Keep studying. And any other complaints, queries, feedback, kuch bhi ho, any worries that you're having, which I'm sure you're having way too many at this point of time, feel free to write. The more you express, probably the more you get it out of your system. So just keep studying and that's all that you can do. Consistency. Just one word at this point of time before the exam. Consistency is what you have to swear by, right? Keep studying, guys. Keep working hard. Last leap, run towards the exam. So I'm sure you're giving it your best shot. Thank you. All the